In the last episode of Metrics Dungeon, our fearless duo Winston Dekados and Eduardo had united with a group of Utara, preparing to liberate Haram Port of the slaver scourge that had forcefully taken over. As they were leaving to begin the assault, the adventurers were presented with a surprising sight. Lomas, being in much better health and spirits than previous meetings, save for the lack of depth perception. He said that he'd been instructed to join the raid on Haram Port, while his companions, D'Angelo and Jetro, take the long road back to make a grim delivery. They prepare for the journey and head forth. We are then all blessed with the Holy Triangle. The Holy, the Holy, the Holy, the Holy, the Holy Triangle is here. Oh. Our adventurers travel along a path they once took and come across a forward force of more Utara, a detachment to be deployed in a pincer movement. The pair identify a bestiary of undead creatures and Winston prize the Utara archivist for more information. His guile is insufficient. Oh my god. Oh wow! Oh, 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 oh. The archivist does decide to throw the duo a bone in the form of a dismembered hand, which Eduardo promptly consumes. As he nibbles on this finger food, he relives and redies a memory of a man in Haran port who's quickly dispatched by a tall elf in a sailor's hat identified to have been in port when our heroes arrived in this land. Was he inserted there as a turncoat? Deciding they've gathered all the knowledge they could, the pair move on further into the camp to fraternise with the rest of the Utara force. Whilst getting to know the participants of this raid, the leader of the force approached the encampment and seemed to give some sort of orders in an unknown language. Eduardo realises that it's a Zis language mixed with common, which, when pried, the Utaran leader uncomfortably informs them it's a language used by House Gorin. Winston's heritage, and another source. Eduardo realises this as it was the same language his tropical uncle used. As they sat around the campfire, both heroes notice that there's script inlaid in the Utaran's armour, which, again, seems to be of common and Zis origins. With the blast of a horn, the troops are signalled to move out, leaving our heroes to discuss what they've uncovered. Eduardo's Uncle Pineapple is brought up in conversation, and when described, Winston believes Uncle Napnap may be of the Zis himself. This answer only creates more questions. The duo leave with the attack force en route to Harren Port. When they arrive, they link up with the Liberation Force and prepare for the battle ahead. The stress of the events to come greatly impacted Wado and seemed to manifest as hallucinations. They discuss the situation with Francis, who was held captive in the port and had managed to send for help as the hostile forces were preoccupied. As some final advice, Francis informs the group that there's barrels of oil strategically placed around and to take full advantage of them. The adventurers notice a light signal from Lomas perched atop a tower. The assault is ready. Our heroes steal themselves and enter the fray. The battle is long and fierce, with many fierce adversaries ready to destroy any who oppose them, and even some that don't. Even the local farm animals join the assault. The heroes then spot the very same elf that Eduardo had seen in his vision, the turncoat murderer. He is a dangerous opponent even exerting some kind of mind control over an Utara soldier and forcing him to fight his allies. Upon realising he's bested by a superior force, he teleports away and the offending side surrender. Our heroes, happy with their complete victory, gather the remaining surrendered soldiers and survey the battlefield. Eduardo spots a necklace that fell from the mind-controlling elf and immediately recognises the jewels in it, which resonate with magical power. He's seen Uncle Pineapple wearing them before. Knowing this, he tries to sneakily grab the necklace without anyone seeing. This plan plays out poorly. You headbutt the Utara in front of you in the shin, and you <laughs> flick, you incidentally flick the amulet right at the feet of Winston. <laughs> Winston sees the necklace and Eduardo's attempts to conceal it from him and picks it up. Winston then announces his discovery, to which Lomas and Penelope, the Utara leader, rush over. Curious as to why it piqued their interest, Winston presses the pair for information, to which they are scant on details. With his powerful wit, Winston is able to get Lomas to admit it's an extremely powerful artifact that needs to be safeguarded. As the adventurers discuss their options with how to deal with the amulet, Eduardo lunges at Winston, hellbent on touching the amulet. Winston deftly hides the amulet away from Eduardo's grasping hands, and a moment later, Eduardo regains his faculties and doesn't recall his outburst. Shaken, he gives his blessing to hand over the artifact. As Winston hands it over to Lomas, Winston accidentally brushes the amulet with his bare skin, sending a surge of pain through his body as well as Eduardo's. They're then seemingly teleported to an unknown location which appears to be a basement. 
Our heroes are left dazed, disoriented, and have even more unanswered questions. But this is their calling, and they're driven to find the answers. So this is where our adventurers are. What happens next? Find out this week on Metrics Dungeon. <laughs>